Hello, grade sevens. Welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are tuning into your first lesson in Economic and Management Sciences for Term 1. Remember, grade sevens, EMS consists of three components, financial literacy, economics and entrepreneurship. In this series of video lessons, we are only going to focus on the economics and entrepreneurship component of EMS. But make sure to check out Tumamina Teaching's YouTube channel for the Financial Literacy Series lessons. My name is Buitumelo Dial and this is my contribution to Tumamina Teaching. Great sevens, as you can see, that's a list of all the lessons we are going to do in term one. But we've got to start somewhere and we are going to start with the history of money. Let's go on a journey through ages. Are you ready? One, two, three. Here we go. It all started thousands of years ago when people practiced bartering and exchanged different products for other products. Barter was a time-consuming process because to exchange you have to want what the other person has and that person should want what you have. Whoa, wait, so are you telling me that if I want something I must give someone something that they want or that he wants so that I can get what I want. Whoa, that's very confusing. So if you are an orange farmer and you're looking for shoes, you're going to have to find a shoe store that's looking for oranges. Otherwise, you will not be able to barter trade, meaning that you will not be able to swap. Do you want to swap? No, thank you. I'm not interested. Conflict and frustration arose as a result of barter and therefore money was developed. Money is a medium of exchange with a recognized value that has been adopted to make it easier for people to trade products and services with each other. Let's take a look at South Africa and our history with money. Before money, traditional South African societies such as Tosa, Zulu and Khoisan tribes use items such as cowrie shells and beads to trade. Spices were also later used to increase trade when more and more ships began to sail around the southern tip of Africa. Grade sevens, this is your turn. Do you think bartering was easy? Well, you have a few seconds to discuss this among yourselves. So barter was complicated and it took a lot of time. Hundreds of years ago in South Africa, traditional societies such as the Zulu and Tosa societies also used Inkomo, also called Izinkomo, to measure wealth or to trade. The more cattle a family had, the richer the family was. Let's have a look at an example of an African tribe that has had many successes in bartering. The Kingdom of Mapungubwe was a medieval state located in South Africa at the confluence of the Shashe and Limpopo rivers south of Great Zimbabwe. The kingdom was powerful and had relatively easy access to the East African coast where it could trade gold and ivory with Arabia. India and China. Today, there are still cultures where wealth is measured in cattle. Just think of lobola or dowry, for example. Let's go a bit forward in time. Ever heard of promissory notes? A promissory note is a written agreement between a borrower and the person lending the money. The promissory note tells us that the borrower will repay the borrowed amount plus interest. The Romans may have already used promissory notes thousands of years back. 
Evidence of a promissory note of that time was found among the Bloomberg tablets in London. Historically, promissory notes acted as a form of privately issued currency. To summarize, a promissory note is like your friend who promises in a letter that he will repay the tax shop money that he borrowed from you. Enough about promissory notes, let's talk about coins. One of the oldest coins in the world was created more than 2,700 years ago and is in the British Museum today. The coin is known as the Lydian Lion. Of course, the coin was handmade from silver. Coins used in ancient times were much larger and heavier than today's coins. Many ancient coins were also made out of gold or silver, where today's coins are made from a mixture of bronze and nickel. South Africa's first introduction to coins was only much later in 1652 by Dutch settlers who started using coins in South Africa. These coins were known as the Dutch Gilder. The rand was introduced at a much later stage in 1961 when South Africa became independent. Today in South Africa we have a 10 cent, 20 cents, 50 cents, 1 rand, 2 rand and a 5 rand coin. In 2022 there were rumors that the Reserve Bank will issue a 10 rand coin and a 500 rand note. However, the Reserve Bank confirmed that the rumors were false. Would you like a 10 rand coin and a 500 rand note? Let us know in the comments below. So grade sevens, that's the history behind coins. Let's have a look at paper notes. Before paper notes, leather notes were used in ancient Rome. Thousands of years ago, leather and animal skin began to form a currency. Early ancient Rome is said to have used this type of money. It is generally considered that paper originated in China. This was also the first country to use paper notes thousands of years ago. In 1865, the first paper notes were published in South Africa. It was the British Pound Note. Almost a hundred years later, the first rand paper notes were printed. As you know, our rand notes appearances has changed quite a bit over the years to adapt to our history. And we are back to the present. We went from bartering to banknotes and now to Bitcoin. What's next? As you know, we are moving into the digital space. We use an automated teller machine, an ATM, to withdraw money. We use our debit cards and simply tap or swipe. One can even pay these days by tapping your phone. Furthermore, online banking allows people to make payments for products or services from the comfort of their home. The money is then electronically transferred to the beneficiary's account. Another great thing about these electronic ways of trading is that you can make your payment from anywhere on earth and you can expect your order to be delivered right at your doorstep. Have you or your parents bought anything online recently? Well, take a moment to share your experience with your peers in your classroom. And just like that, we have come to the end of our first lesson. I know time flies when you're having fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. But before you go, please be sure to test yourself by scanning this QR code or even better, clicking on the link below to attempt the self-marking exercise. See you soon. Don't forget to subscribe.